is the second half of the practice test for chapter four. So let's take a look at our first problem up here. And what we're doing here is solving another equation. This time we're going to multiply by the reciprocal to solve. And so if I multiply by 9 over 8, that will cross-cancel the 8s and the 9s. I do the same thing on the other side. I multiply this side by 9 over 8, and I look for some cross-canceling. So what I see is that the 30 and the 9 have a common factor of 3. So you can divide them each by 3. So the 9, when I divide that by 3, I get 30. When I divide the, or 3, sorry. When I divide the 30 by 9, or by 3, I end up with 10. And so I can go ahead and multiply across now. And when I do that, 3 times 23 is what I'm multiplying. So let me rewrite that. 23 times by the 3. And then I'm multiplying the 10 by the 8. And so that leaves me with a total of 69 over 80. So let's take a look at our next one. Here we are adding some decimals. So I'm adding 41 and 94 hundredths, and I'm adding 27 and 32 hundredths. So I just line up decimals when I'm adding. I have 4 and 2 ends up making 6. 9 and 3 ends up making 12. Carry a 1. Bring the decimal point straight down. And then adding these numbers up, 1, 1, and 7 make 9. And 4 and 2 make 6. So 69 and 26 hundredths. Next problem, I'm subtracting two numbers, 73 and 56 hundredths, and I'm taking away 38 and 84 hundredths. And so when I subtract, I need to go ahead and borrow if possible. So here I'm having to borrow from the, all the way back from the 7, changes to a 6, 13 now to a 12, and now I'm doing 15 minus 8, which is 7. Add that decimal point, bring that straight down, do 12 minus 8 makes 4. And then 6 minus 3 makes 3. So 34 and 72 hundredths. This one's a multiplication problem, so I'm going to end up writing it over here. And when you multiply, you don't have to worry about lining up decimals. You just deal with the decimals at the end of the problem. It's just a regular old multiplication problem. And so I do 1 times each of these numbers. So 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 5 is 5. Then you add a placeholder as a 0 because we're moving over one place value. And then multiply again. 9 times 2 is 18. Carry a 1. 9 times 1 is 9 plus 1 is 10. Carry another 1. 45 is what we get when we multiply 9 and 5. Add the 1 and we get 46. So I'm adding all these numbers up. And I end up with a 2, a 9, a 5, a 6, and a 4. Now I look at the decimals. So I've got 1, 2, 3 spaces to the right of the decimal. That means I'm going to move the decimal three spaces as well. And so it goes right in that spot. So our answer is 46 and 592 thousandths is the way I'd read that number. Well, the next problem, same sort of thing. The difference is we have a negative sign. So right away in your answer box, you're going to put a negative sign because one negative makes a negative. And now we'll go ahead and do the work. So I've got 4 and 24 hundredths, and I'm multiplying by 8 and 2 tenths. I've already figured out the problem is negative, so I don't have to worry about putting that or dealing with that sign anymore. Now I'm doubling each of these numbers. So I end up with 8, uh, let's see here, 8 and a 4 and an 8. So eight time, or 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 4 is 8. Carry a 0 for a placeholder and then multiply again. 8 times 4 is 32. 8 and 2 is 16, plus 3 makes 19, and 8 and 4 is 32 once more. Except I need to carry a 1 because I had that 19, so that makes 33. And so I add this stuff up, I get 8, 6, 17, carry a 1, 4, and 3. And so now I need to move the decimal. I need to move it back 1, 2, 3 spaces. So 1, 2, 3 it goes right there. So there's my answer, 34 and 768 thousandths. So notice that it's negative there. So now it says Ricky's hourly salary is $9.64, $9.64. Last week she worked 22 hours. And how much did she earn? So her hourly salary is $9.64. So she worked 22 hours. So she's getting paid $9.64 every hour. That's what this line means, every hour. Or another way to say that is per hour. So if I multiply by the number of hours, then I end up finding out how much she made because my hours will cancel and just left with dollars. So I need to multiply 
9 and 64 hundredths by 22. Well, the nice thing about multiplying by double numbers like this is that once you multiply once, you've got the next set of values. So this makes 8, 12, carry a 1. This makes a 18 and 1 make 19. So it's going to be the same numbers, 1, 9, 2, 8, except just moved over one space. So an 8 there, a 2 here, 9 here, and a 1 here. Add this stuff up, you get 8, 0, because of 10, and that makes 12. Carry another 1, you end up with 11, carry a 1, and a 2. Now your decimal moves back two spaces, so there it is. We've got a dollar sign and $212.08. Now we're doing some division. So when we divide, the key is to move the decimal point over in the divisor. Well, it's already over. It's all right at the end. So it's 24 into, and then I've got 151.2. <coughs> So I go ahead and do the division. 24 doesn't go into 15, so I need to do 24 into 151. So I'm going to do that same trick. Cover up the 4, cover up the 1, 2 into 15 ends up going in there about 6 times. And so 6 times 2 makes 12, so it's going to be pretty close. So this makes 24. Carry 2 now, and multiply 2 and 6 to get 12, plus 2 makes 144. Do that subtraction, and I'm left with Okay, that's a 1 there, so this makes this makes a 1, so I've got to borrow, and that makes a 7 left over, so I have 72. Now make sure you bring up that decimal. It's always important to bring up the decimals right away, and I probably should have done that even before I started the division. So 24 into 72, well that goes in there 3 times. See, 3 times 2 makes seven, or 6, that's pretty close to 7. Well, when I do 3 times 24, I end up with that same number, 72. So there it is, 6 and 3 tenths. Well, looking up here, we've got another division problem. Right away, you see we've only got one negative. So right away, put the minus sign in the problem. So you get the sign right. And now let's do the division, 4 and 5 tenths. And instead of 4 and 5 tenths, let's move that decimal over one space right now so we don't even have to deal with it. And so... I'll move that decimal over, move this one over, so it's really 45 into, and then I have 371 and 7 tenths. So that decimal point goes straight up, and I do the division, 45 into 371. Well, cover up the 5, cover up the 1, how many times does 4 go into 37? Well, it goes into 37, oh, let's see here, 4 times 9 makes 36, but... 4 times 5 is going to give me something too big to round up, so I'm going to go with an 8 instead. And so 8 times 5 makes 40. This 4 times 8 makes 32, plus a 4 ends up making 36. That's pretty close. So I have 117 now to do, so I brought down the 11 is what I got when I subtracted. That brought down the 7. And 45 into a 117. So do the same thing. Cover up the 5. And cover up the 7, how many times does 4 go into 11? It goes 2 times. And so when I multiply across, I end up getting a 10. And carry a 1, that makes 90. And so I do the subtraction once more, I have 27. So i got to bring down another 0, and that's a placeholder. So the number in the quotient is going to go right above. So 4 into 27, well, 6 times 4 makes 24. So that's pretty close, so let's see if it works. 6 times... 5 is 30, 6 times 4 is 24, plus 3 makes 27. So that did end up working. So there's our answer, 8 and 26 hundredths. So you spend so much time with the division, make sure you get that sign right. That's why I always put it in there first. What is the most appropriate measure for the length of a counter? Well, remember we have a few different types. We had that millimeter, we had the, which is about the thickness of, your, of a dime. We had a centimeter, which is about the thickness of a of a uh, your little finger, and then you had a meter, which was the thickness of a door, the distance between uh, between the ends of the door, not the height, but the width of the door. And then we had a kilometer, which was like 10 football fields. So which one would be more appropriate? Well, I'd go with the meter, because a counter is going to be a little bit more, let me just say, more than the width of a doorway. And so it's okay that it's not exactly that, but but it's about it. It's pretty close to the width of a doorway, so definitely go with the meter. Here we have to convert some units. So we're converting 
milligrams to grams. So remember, we have a thousand milligrams is to one gram. So we want to go two grams though. So start with the 1800 and we're in milligrams and write that over one. Now I'm multiplying by milligrams on the bottom because I want those to cross cancel grams on top because that's what I want. So a thousand milligrams is to one gram or I could say one gram is to a thousand milligrams. So you can see I'm dividing by a thousand. So that's going to move the decimal over one, two, three spaces. So my answer is one and eight tenths grams. Which is greater, 320 meters or 3,200 centimeters. So what we need to do is convert these or convert these, either one. And what I'll go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and try changing these centimeters to meters. So 3,200 centimeters over 1 multiplied by, now I'm just going to cancel out centimeters. So I'm going to put centimeters in the bottom so they cross cancel meters on top. Well, 1 meter is to 100 centimeters. So that means I need to divide by 100. So what that's going to do is it's moving the decimal two spaces. So it's right there. So 32 meters is less than 320 meters. So I would go with 320 meters being the bigger amount. Next problem is a, an equation, so I'm going to do an opposite operation. I'm subtracting the 12 and the 6 tenths from both sides. So when I do that, I have to borrow a bit, change the 5 to a 4, and do the subtraction. I'm left with 2 and 6 tenths. And the next problem says the Harrison cell 23 CDs. Harrison sells 23 CDs. He makes a total, a total of $297.85. Write an equation that can be used to find out how much, how much each CD is sold for. So this is the unknown. This is my variable. So I'm going to say that this equals, and then I kind of need to come up with some sort of variable, the cost. How about the cost of a CD? How much each CD was sold for? So each CD costs C dollars. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up an equation this way. 23 CDs times the cost of one CD equals $297.85. So that's the way I end up writing it. And again, C equals the cost of one CD. Well, the last problem asks us to solve for A, so I'm going to use some multiplication, and I'm going to multiply by 6 and 1300. That'll cancel out the 6 and 1300s on that side. Do the same thing on this side. So when I do that, I've got to set up a 9 and 2 tenths, and I'm multiplying by 6 and 1300s. So you just multiply. 2 and 3 make 6. 2 and 1 make 2. 2 and 6 make 12. Carry a 0 and do the multiplication some more. 9 times 3, so I'm making 27. Carry a 2. 9 and 1 make 9, plus 2 makes 11. And I go ahead and uh, carry that 1. And I do a, actually, I don't even need, yeah, carry the 1 because it made 11. And 9 and 6 made 54, plus 1 makes 55. So I go ahead and add that stuff up. I've got 6, 9, 3, 6, and 5. Now, where's that decimal point go? Well, count the spaces. 1, 2, 3 spaces after the decimal point. So move it over. 3 spaces. So there it is. 56 and... 396 thousandths. That's what we end up getting. So those are types of problems we'll see on the test. Good luck.